One in two North Americans are obese or overweight. Poor eating habits and lack of regular exercise are putting us at a high risk for diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, osteoarthritis, back pain, sleep disorders, fatigue, and cancer. Are you at risk? Could that be you? Is your health keeping you from doing the things you love? Or the ones you love? Is that worth changing for? Change. Every small step takes you closer to good health. Change takes time and effort. You are worth it. Meals for Good Health can help you be healthier so you can do the things you love. Features of Meals for Good Health. Welcome to the Meals for Good Health kitchen. Karen Graham, registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator and author of Meals for Good Health. This DVD will help you learn how to use Meals for Good Health as both a cookbook and a complete meal planner. It will give you new ideas about getting started with lifestyle changes, meal planning, and cooking. By making easy changes, you will be able to lose weight, reduce your fatigue and heartburn, or manage your diabetes, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure. You will also be able to reduce your risk of some cancers and feel better and be healthier. An empowering, healthy living idea book. It's nice to, to know that you're eating the best that you can for health, not just for weight loss, but for prevention of um, chronic illnesses and cancers and things like that. To know that you're doing that um, and losing weight, well, that's great too. <laughs> but it is, it, it's good to feel healthy. Beautiful, life-size photographs of everyday meals. I think it's a beautiful book, visually, as well as in content. All meal photos are actual life-size, so you can see how much to eat. Portions are really important, so in my book I have life-size photographs of meals that you can simply look at and it shows you what to eat. You don't have to worry about counting calories, I've done all that work for you. You just simply look at the pictures, you can decide on the large meals or the small meals, add in your snacks and you're ready to go. So let's get started. What I like about it is it's, it's laid out very simply. Um, uh, it's the, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner are color coded in the in the book, so you can flip through those sections quickly and easily. And once you latch on to the idea that uh, you've got a, a large meal and a small meal available in each of those sections for each of the recipes, um, it, it's simply a matter of choosing what you feel like having that day. Uh, again, you're not being deprived of anything. A month of calorie equivalent meals. Dinners are all the same number of calories. Breakfasts are all the same number of calories, same with lunches, and even snacks. There's quite a selection of snacks in the back. Some, some are 50 calories, another page there'll be 100 calories and so on. So you don't have to sit figuring out calories. And you can just go ahead and make the meal and be quite, quite happy. Nutrition information for each meal and recipe. Easy to make and delicious low-fat recipes the pictures of the meal, you just have to look at it and say, okay, I can do that, because most of the pictures are easy to do. Easy tips to help you achieve weight loss and better health. 
I love this book because I can use it with a wide range of clients. If it's children, adults, people that are wanting to lose weight, whether they have diabetes or heart disease or all of the above, it's just a multifaceted book. I call it a great idea book for healthy eating. I use it in a lot of different ways. The life-size photos of the real food are always so helpful because in a snapshot, I always say a picture is worth a thousand words, it really teaches people how to put a healthy meal together. I'd recommend it to anybody. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. Like I think a lot of people, if they started using that book, that they'd have a lot healthier life. You've got to get this book. And it works. It works because it's so simple. Karen hopes her meals will bring joy and healthy eating to you and your family. Turn to Meals for Good Health when you're wondering Hmm, what should I make for dinner? This book will be a lifelong resource that you will always be able to use for healthy meal planning. How to use Meals for Good Health Following Meals for Good Health will help you feel energized and healthy and help you lose weight, reduce cholesterol, blood sugars, or blood pressure. In this section of the DVD, we'll look at how Meals for Good Health is organized to help you know what foods to choose and how much to eat. Because the meals have the same number of calories, all you have to do is decide on either the large or small meal, and the photograph shows you how much you can eat. The large meals have about 30% more calories than the small meals. There are also different categories of snacks, including low calorie, small, medium, and large. The snacks and meals are color coded. There are nine breakfast meals shown in the yellow section of the book. The large breakfast meals are the life size photographs and have 370 calories each. The small breakfast meals are shown in the inset photograph and have less calories, 250 each. In the green section of the book, you'll find 10 different lunch ideas. The large lunches have 520 calories and the small lunches have 400 calories. In the blue section of the book are 31 dinners. The large dinners have 730 calories and the small dinners have 550 calories. And in the purple section are the four snack groups with a large variety of snacks. The first is the low calorie snacks and they have very few calories, less than 20 each. Author Karen Graham calls these your free foods. The small snacks each have 50 calories. The medium snacks each have 100 calories and the large snacks each have 200 calories. Now you need to decide whether you should be eating the large or small meals and how many snacks you need each day. Go to dinner one in Meals for Good Health and look at the life-size photograph of the chicken and potato meal. If the palm of your hand is about the size of the one and a half pieces of chicken and your fist is about the size of the one and a half potatoes, then choose the large meal plan. Don't worry about counting calories. If your hand is closer in size to the one piece of chicken and one potato, then the small meals are for you. You may need to add a few snacks to your daily meal plan to satisfy your hunger. So people love the pictures. I find people are very visual learners and if they need a plan that they can adapt that's easy to follow, it's in the book and I can help them select an appropriate caloric level that is safe and healthy for them for appropriate weight loss. If someone needs something that's really quick that can easily fit into their lifestyle, we can use the hand portion sizes and gauge, you know, this is the size your baked potato should be, this is how much rice you should have at one meal. We can adopt the hands and they can just look at the pictures, get ideas that way and gauge their own portions using their hand size and they can take their hands with them wherever they go. Depending on the caloric level, the individual, their needs, we can opt for either the larger meals 
or the smaller meals. And also just based on using their hands, usually you can see someone's hands fit with the rest of their body. So a lot of times the women that I'm counseling, they can opt for the smaller meals and that fits perfectly with a fist for one potato and a palm for one chicken breast. And then when I talk to the larger men, they're just so happy that they can have that one and a half baked potatoes and the one and a half chicken breast. And it really makes sense for them and they realize they're not going to be hungry all the time following this kind of plan and they're going to get that great variety of foods. You can have everything you want to have, uh, just cut back on the amount of it and, uh, and what the book does is it shows you exactly how many calories you're, you're uh, taking in every day and it's up to you to decide how you want to proportion that out. And again, there's a, I love this section that uh, uh, lays out the, uh, the different uh, uh, total calorie amounts that you can choose from and then choose which meals that uh, you want to take uh, out of the book for that. If you are trying to lose weight, here is a general rule. Women choose 1,200 to 1,800 calories per day. Men choose 1,500 to 2,200 calories per day. Here is one example of a day's intake of about 2,000 calories using meals and snacks from Meals for Good Health. We've got a large breakfast, large lunch, and large dinner and one small snack, one medium snack, and one large snack. The meals and snacks in Meals for Good Health give you ideas and suggestions, starting points for your imagination. Have fun making your own combination of meals and snacks. Karen Graham's 10 Changes for Good Health. Let's start with a few ideas to make small but significant changes in your daily eating and exercise habits. Even making small changes takes time and effort. But over time, it gets easier to make more small changes, and each change will make you feel better. Eat breakfast. Big or little, everyone needs a hearty breakfast. It wakes you up and gives you energy to get the morning's work done. Did you know that breakfast eaters are on average at a healthier body weight and live longer? Eating breakfast has been clearly associated with better health. Eat proper portions. It is important to eat slowly and to focus on what you are eating. Here is Karen's guide to show you how much you should eat at your main meal based on your body size. Your starch, such as potato, rice, or pasta, should be about the size of your fist. Keep in mind that growing teenagers or active adults may need two fistfuls at their meals. The vegetables and fruits should fill up your two open hands. The milk should be about one half to one cup. Children and teenagers should have a glass of milk with each meal. For your calcium choice, if you are having a solid food, like cheese, nuts, or tofu, keep to a portion about the size of your whole thumb. The protein food should be about the size of your palm. For women, this usually means 3 to 5 ounces, and for men, 4 to 6 ounces. Most of us eat too much meat, and cutting back is an important health change. And the fat added during cooking or at the table should not be more than the end of your thumb. For either oil, margarine, butter or lard, this usually equals about one to two teaspoons or less at a meal. When using a light sour cream, such as in this meal, you can use as much as two thumbfuls. The, the thing that I liked was, okay, this is how much, a handful of, you know, protein or uh, a thumbnail full of butter, you know, that's what I liked, it showed exactly what you're talking about. We have a difficult time telling what a normal portion is today because everything is oversized. Your plate or bowl size or size of your drink glasses can make a big difference to how much you eat. Get out a measuring cup and measure how much your glasses, bowls and dishes can hold. If you use large glasses, bowls and plates, you may be eating and drinking too much and not even realizing it. Use a smaller glass, smaller bowl, and smaller plate, and you'll start eating and drinking less. 
Take a look at these two plates that have the same amount of food on them. You can see that the plate on the right looks like more food. That's because it's on a smaller plate. By using a smaller plate, it is easier to cut down your portions and still feel satisfied. If you were served ice cream in this large bowl, what would you think? Probably you'd think it's really skimpy. Now what would you think about ice cream in this bowl? Are you thinking it's still a bit skimpy? Now what would you think about your ice cream in this bowl? Are you thinking it looks like an okay serving? In each bowl there was just one scoop of ice cream, but you will feel a lot more satisfied with the serving in the small bowl. Karen says that the main problem with desserts is not the ice cream or the dessert, it's the bowl we put it in. In other words, having a small serving of dessert is part of healthy eating. There are many delicious low-fat dessert recipes in Meals for Good Health. Fill up on vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruit have lots of fiber and water, and they help you feel full. When you eat more vegetables and fruits, it becomes easier to lose weight. In part, this is because it allows you to cut back on your portions of meat and fats, as well as cut back on sweet desserts, donuts, and high-fat snacks like potato chips. Here is an easy way to eat more vegetables at your main meal so that you get a healthy balance. Fill about half your plate with vegetables. Try to have two kinds of vegetables. Now that you've filled your plate with vegetables, limit your protein, such as your meat, chicken, or fish, to just one quarter of your plate. Finally, fill the last quarter of your plate with starch, such as potatoes, rice, pasta, or bread, with just a small amount of added fat if you wish. On the side, choose a fruit and a glass of milk. Now you have all food groups in a healthy balance. For weight loss, fill up on the low-calorie vegetables and prepare them in low-fat ways. In addition to helping fill you up, fruits and vegetables are storehouses of disease-fighting vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. Different colored fruits and vegetables have different nutrients, so choose many colors. With a meal, if you're going to present it to someone, then you want it to be colorful. And the more color in it makes it easier for, uh, you know, if it's colorful, people will eat it. Eat less fat. If you're trying to lose weight, the most important thing that you can do is eat less fat. A lot of the fat we eat is hidden in our meat, snacks, and processed foods. We don't even know we are eating it. For example, a large bag of potato chips is made with about three potatoes, but has 18 teaspoons of fat added and totals 1,350 calories. A jumbo bag of chips has 23 teaspoons of fat and 1,850 calories. Watching TV makes many of us snack and overeat even when we're not hungry. Before you know it, you've eaten a whole bag of chips. When you watch TV or are at the computer, try to not eat. Instead, just drink water. Or better yet, limit your TV watching and computer time and use some of that time to go for a walk. There are many more tips to help you eat less fat in Meals for Good Health. Drink more water. There are many reasons to drink more water, including to quench your thirst and help prevent dehydration, to help reduce your risk for some cancers, and to help your body absorb important nutrients from food. An important everyday reason to drink more water is that water fills up your stomach and helps you feel full so you don't overeat. So remind yourself to drink water. Drink water in the morning, and with meals, and drink water whenever you feel hungry. There's all kinds of other aspects to this book besides you know, recipes and, and, uh, and, and food. There's uh, the nutritional part of it, the description of uh, uh, the benefits of uh, drinking water, for instance. You know, everybody, you hear about it all the time, but you know, we should break it down and tell you why. Limit sugar. 
As you start to drink more water, you will begin to drink fewer sweet beverages. Drinking sugared beverages is one of the main reasons we become overweight. Consider this. In a day, if you drink a liter bottle of cola, three glasses of apple juice, and had a chocolate cappuccino, you will get almost 60 teaspoons of sugar and 1,200 calories. That's the number of calories that some of us just need to eat for the whole day. It's about the same number of calories as a small breakfast, lunch, and dinner from Meals for Good Health. These are some of the sugar drinks that add to our waistlines. Juice. Even unsweetened juice has a lot of natural sugar, and in fact, juice has as much sugar as regular soft drinks. A fresh fruit is the best way to get your vitamin C. Kool-Aid, Tang, Cola, or 7-Up, slushies and sports drinks all of these drinks are mostly sugar with chemical flavors and colors added. Milk has calcium and other vitamins and minerals, so it is good for you. If you drink milk in large amounts, especially chocolate milk and flavored milk, it will also add sugar to your diet. Limit salt and alcohol. You will be able to reduce your total salt intake if you follow the meal and snack sizes shown in Meals for Good Health, add little or no salt to foods at the table, and cut back on processed foods. Here are just a couple of examples of herbs and spices that you can use instead of added salt to give your meals a delicious flavor. Dill is a wonderful herb to add flavor to boiled potatoes and potato salads, to soups, sauces, and seafood dishes. Parsley, green onions, and chives are great, fresh or dried, added to stocks, soups, meats, egg dishes, spaghetti sauces, and salads. Garlic and onions, good for your heart and for fighting cancers, can be used in practically any main meal dish. Limiting or avoiding alcohol is another important health change. Please read the information in Meals for Good Health. Here is one example of how many calories there are in alcohol and why it is difficult to lose weight when you are drinking on a regular basis. One beer, or two ounces of hard liquor such as whiskey or rum, has about the same calories as two slices of bread. Now, think of this. When you drink a six-pack of beer, you get 900 calories, equal to a small loaf of bread. That's a lot. In comparison, six diet soft drinks have only 20 calories. Smart Shopping We're all tempted by food that looks rich and sweet, so it's important to keep temptation out of sight and out of mind. Your shopping trip is the most important step because whatever food you bring home from grocery shopping, you will eat. So, before you go shopping, have a glass of water or a small snack. Then you'll not be so hungry. Take a list. Avoid the most dangerous aisles, that is, the aisles stacked with potato chips, cookies, and sweet drinks. Don't linger in the bakery section. Quickly pick up your fiber-rich breads and leave. Fill up your shopping cart with healthy foods. Whole grain breads, cereals, rice, and pasta. Fruits and vegetables. Lean meats, low-fat cheeses, and milk. It's okay to buy a few treats, but if you have so many that you fill up your cart, then there's no room for healthy foods. As soon as you get home from shopping, put your food away. Remember, out of sight, out of mind. Limit restaurant meals. Restaurant meals are often large or supersized and loaded with salt, sugar, and fat. Don't go for the large size or supersizes. Instead, choose the small, remembering that the small size used to be the only size. Meals for Good Health does include a few restaurant meals and tips and ideas for healthy restaurant eating. But the majority of meals in Meals for Good Health are home-cooked meals that are fast and easy and much healthier. Think about making your dinner at home 
the meal of the day. If you have a family, it's a good time to talk over the day, relax, and enjoy the meal. Eating at home is a great healthy habit. Walk for health. Go for a walk when you start to feel hungry. Sometimes we eat because we feel bored or stressed. So get out of the house, away from the food, and burn calories instead. For a healthy weight, we need to eat well, but also we need daily exercise. Hilda has lost over 100 pounds by following the meal plans in Meals for Good Health and exercising every day. Of course, I'm following the small meal. So that's why my weight's come off. I'm also walking in the summer an hour and exercising with an exercise bike in the winter. Inactivity is the leading cause of obesity. Even if you are not a big eater, if you are inactive, you will not burn enough calories and you will gain weight. The solution is obvious. Get active. Spend more time standing, moving, walking, swimming, and working or playing outdoors. Think about exercise as if it was a prescription pill from your doctor. Your daily exercise pill would be the best way to treat diabetes and heart disease and to help you lose weight. This exercise pill would also be an effective treatment for many other chronic diseases and conditions, such as arthritis in the knees and ankles, certain lung conditions, lower back pain, poor sleeping, fatigue and stress. You would have stronger muscles and bones and you would look and feel better. Since you can't get exercise in a pill, you need to make walking or other physical exercise an everyday part of your life. Combine daily exercise with good nutrition and you will have better health and live longer. Easy Meal Planning Karen Graham applied the latest scientific knowledge about how nutrients from the different food groups work together. Each food group makes its own special contribution to your health. There we are. We've prepared the meal. There. There you go. That looks beautiful. And there you go. You've got your meal. You've got the four food groups. Here are the food groups. Starches and grains. Whole grains are excellent choices. Vegetables and fruits. Choose a variety of colors and you will get a variety of vitamins. Remember, five to ten servings of fruits and vegetables are recommended daily. Calcium-rich foods like milk, yogurt, cheese, soy products, beans, fish with bones, and some nuts and vegetables. Meats and other proteins. Protein is very important, yet you only need a small amount each day to be healthy and a small amount of healthy fats that come from fish, vegetable oils, nuts and seeds, and other foods. A varied and colorful diet is the best plan. Meals for Good Health makes meal planning easy for you because all the meals combine foods from the different food groups. At the end of the day, you will have the nutrients you need for good health. Let's take a look at some of the breakfast meals, lunches, dinners, and snacks. Meals for Good Health Breakfasts The egg and toast breakfast has all the different food groups for good health. Whole wheat bread as your high-fiber starch, half an orange for fruit, a glass of milk for calcium, an egg for protein, and a small amount of margarine. Dry cereal. Bananas are an excellent source of potassium, but remember they do have a lot of calories. So half of a small banana is the portion considered equal to a whole orange. Toast and peanut butter. Apples are an excellent source of vitamin C and are rich in antioxidants that help fight cancer and keep your body healthy. There is some truth in the old saying that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Muffin and yogurt. These bran muffins are low in fat and are an excellent source of fiber. The orange gives you vitamin C, and the yogurt and cheese gives you calcium. Meals for Good Health Lunches Lunch is simpler than dinner, but can be hearty too. 
you can choose to have your lighter lunch meal in the evening and have your full dinner at noon. The sandwich is usually the backbone of a bag lunch for school or work and many lunches at home. You can vary sandwich fillings to get a variety of nutrients. Try egg, salmon, sardines, cheese, peanut butter, or different types of meat. Also vary the bread, whole wheat, rye, and occasionally white too if you choose. Beans and toast. It's healthy to choose beans, lentils, and dried peas as replacement for meat at least a couple of times a week. Meals for Good Health Dinners Need inspiration for dinner? Never again will you say, what should I make for dinner? The month of dinner photographs in Meals for Good Health will give you ideas for arranging nutritious, attractive meals. The meals are easy to make and use everyday ingredients. You may follow the photograph meals exactly or use them for inspiration and vary them to suit yourself. This balanced pasta dinner has four food groups. Spaghetti for starch, carrots and salad for vegetables, a glass of milk for calcium, and meat sauce for protein with some added veggies. Fish is an excellent way to get your omega-3 fats, which are healthy for your heart. Try to choose fish at least once a week. You'll find a variety of fish-based dinners in Meals for Good Health. A hearty soup is an easy and nutritious meal. There are a few restaurant meals shown in Meals for Good Health. These have the same calories as the other dinner meals. You can still occasionally eat out as part of a healthy diet. When you do choose to eat out, it's important to control your portions. And to boost your nutrients and help fill you up, order a salad with dressing on the side or extra vegetables. Here is pizza with two pieces for the large meal and one piece for the small meal and a large salad and diet drink. I use that as a teaching tool, showing people how easily they can get all of the food groups and that all foods can fit, that there's a great variety in this book, that there is the fast food meals and that they should be used occasionally, that bacon can be part of an occasional breakfast. And I tell people it's what we do most of the time, not what we do some of the time, and that this book provides that whole range. Meals for Good Health Snacks Another excellent section in this book is the snacking section. I love how everything's color-coded so we can just flip to whatever section we need, but the snacking is excellent because people always want snacks, yet people often get a lot of extra calories and a lot of extra fat from the snacks that they eat, and they're not aware of that. Meals for Good Health really helps with the snack. Snacks can contribute to a healthy diet. Meals for Good Health has a great variety of snacks from all the food groups. Some snacks are marked as an occasional snack, such as potato chips, cheesies, a donut, and jelly beans or chocolate. These are often our favorites, yet they are high in sugar or fat, and so should be chosen less often. What I like about the, the, the snack section is, you know, we don't eat a lot of desserts in our house, but we will have a tendency to have a, uh, a snack halfway through uh, the afternoon. And depending on what you feel like and what's available. Uh, Karen's book allows you to have snacks and also lays out exactly how many calories each of these snacks uh, contain. And so, you know, whatever you're doing that day, if you uh, are having a lighter, uh, lighter meals that day, you can have a little bit, uh, splurge a little bit on, on your snack. Instead of having an apple, you might have a cookie or a, or a donut even. Um, donuts. I know, I know. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I don't know any diet book who says, yes, you can have a donut. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Meals for Good Health Success Stories Take a moment to listen to Mandy, who lost 50 pounds in just one year using Meals for Good Health. When I really got serious about losing weight, I needed to have some sort of way of keeping track of what I eat or knowing what to eat or how much, a little bit easier than just counting calories and everything. So I, I had that book at work and I, I had gone through it a few times but I really read through it in detail to see how it would work for me and I did use it. I started out um, 
making a meal plan from it. The book really helps you visually say, okay, well, this is how much I can eat. And it's not, like it, if people look at it, it's not a, a tiny amount of food. There's a lot of food in there. And I think that really um, helps people who have been dieting for years, thinking they need to starve themselves. The, the meals are healthy and a good size. You don't go hungry. It's just what, what to put on your plate and in what portions. It's nice to, um, to know that you're eating the best that you can for health, not just for weight loss, but for prevention of um, chronic illnesses and cancers and things like that. To know that you're doing that um, and losing weight, well, that's great too. <laughs> but it is, it, it's good to feel healthy. Listen to Hilda, who weighed over 350 pounds four years ago. She has lost over 100 pounds using Meals for Good Health, and she's on her way to losing more. Her high blood sugar and high blood cholesterol improved and are now within the normal range. So people, the relatives, man, they come and greet me, and they say, are you sick? I says, no, I'm not sick, I'm feeling okay. Because <laughs> they, they knew me from before, I was quite heavy, actually 350 pounds. Eh? Oh, I had tried many different types of diets and I could lose some, but then it always come back on me. So then uh, I ran across uh, Karen's book, Meals for Good Health, and I purchased it and I was really impressed with it. And people may think they can't eat very much, but there's lots and lots for them to choose from. Nobody would starve, but like they have to make up their own mind whether they want to eat the big meal or the small meal. And I, uh, as I looked at it, it just came to me that, no, you better take the small meals because that's the only way I could see myself losing weight. And I did. Here's Dee Dee, who has lost 20 pounds using Meals for Good Health and feels great. Sometimes when I'm looking through the book and I'm in a hurry, you flip it open, you see the picture, it's like, oh, that looks delicious, okay, there's my lunch today. Because I've seen the picture and yeah, okay, I can work with that one. Mm -hmm. And I've got a real sweet tooth, so I like looking at those desserts and say, oh yeah, that works. <laughs> I can have dessert today, you know. It, that's really why I like the book so much, because it's just everything you like. Mm -hmm. So many of the books and the diets and that, it's like they work for a month or, or six weeks or something. It's like, oh, I'm tired of this. You don't get tired of this because it's ordinary food. It's everyday stuff. You can go out and eat. You can go to McDonald's and, and have a cheeseburger and fries. And you're still following the plan. And that, so that's why it works. That's why I think it works for me anyway. And Priscilla has lost 10 pounds using Meals for Good Health, and her sister-in-law has lost 50 pounds. I go to um, cooking class, so that's where we got the books from, and then when I got home, I looked through the recipes, and I cooked quite a few of them, and I'm still cooking from there. I have four kids, so it's very, very fast for me. It's a very good book. I really like the book. It's very easy for me and my kids. I, I have a 13-year-old, well, 12-year-old daughter, and it's easier for her too, like she cooks out of there. So it's good for her and the boys like the meals. That's what's more important, <laughs> what the kids like to eat. My son, Eric, he never ate vegetables before. And then when I started cooking from that book, he's, he doesn't mind them now. So it's very good. It turned out good for for me, like for my kids, yeah. Their favorite meals are spaghetti in that recipe book, the hamburger soup I really liked. Because I used to cook hamburger soup and I didn't cook it like that. And I like the way this recipe is. I'd recommend it to anybody. Yeah, anybody. <laughs> yeah. Like I think a lot of people, if they started using that book, that they'd have a lot healthier life. Especially young mothers that, you know, that don't really know how to cook, but it's very easy for a young mother to follow. That's really, 
a good book for young mothers. I know that making changes to your lifestyle can be a challenge. If you have diabetes or high cholesterol or high blood pressure or you're trying to lose weight, there's a lot of changes you have to make. I hope that my book, Meals for Good Health, will be a support to you in making those changes. So good luck! <laughs>